Welcome to lecture 25, section 5.2 of the text Elementary Linear Algebra by Ron Larson, 7th edition, Sengage Learning. Inner Product Spaces. This is Dr. Gilbert Eyabi. Lecture goal. Determine whether a function defines an inner product and find the inner product of two vectors in Rn of two vectors in M, Mn, the set of matrices of dimension M cross N, the set of all polynomials of order N, and the set of all real valued continuous functions on the closed bounded interval AB. Recall that all these are vector spaces. Let's start off by observing a few things with respect to inner products. The first is that the dot product which we studied in lecture 24 is actually an inner product and we call that a Euclidean inner product and we denoted that with u dot v. But in this lecture we are introducing the general inner product for a vector space which is denoted by the function uv. So this is a function. Definition let u, v, and omega be vectors in a vector space, and let c be a real number, that is a scalar. An inner product on v is a function, denoted in this form, that satisfies the following axioms. The function u, v equals the function v, u. The function u, comma, v plus w equals the function u, v, plus the function u, w, and c times the function u, v equals c times u, comma, v. That is the function c, u, comma, v. And lastly, the function v, v is always bigger than or equal to zero. And moreover, whenever the function v, v equals zero, we must have that the vector is the zero vector. Let's swallow that with an example. Define the function uv by u1 v1 plus 2 u2 v2 on r squared, where u is defined by the components u1 u2 and v is defined by the components v1 v2. Now observe this definition very closely. What are we doing here? The function uv is defined as follows. You multiply the first components plus two times the product of the second components. So we're going to verify all four axioms and see if the whole following the definition of this function uv. Axiom 1, uv equals u1 v1 plus 2 u2 v2, and we recall that we are dealing with the vector space r squared, so by u1 v1 u2 v2 are real numbers, and therefore following commutativity in r, u1 v1 is the same as v1 u1, and u2 v2 is the same as v2 u2, and this actually defines the function v u so axiom one holds beautiful axiom two let omega be the function defined by the components omega one omega two then the function u comma v plus omega equals this is our u u one u two and using our addition of vectors in r squared that is v one plus omega one comma v two plus omega two and using our definition of the function u v that gives us the first component times the first component of v plus w plus two times the second component times this second component. And rearranging, we have u1 v1 plus 2 u2 v2, that's the first parenthesis, plus u1 w1 plus two times u2 w2, second parenthesis. And observe by our definition of the function uv that this is simply uv plus the function u omega and that means that the second axiom also holds.
axiom 3. Let C be a real number. Then C times UV equals C times U1 V1 plus 2 U2 V2. This is the definition of the function UV. Now, this is scalar multiplication. So that breaks down to C times U1, all of that comma V1, plus 2 times C U2, all of that times V2. Observe by the definition of the function UV that this is simply the function C U comma V. And that means axiom 3 also holds. Now axiom 4, the function VV equals V1 squared plus 2 V2 squared. V1 squared is bigger than or equal to 0. V2 squared is bigger than or equal to 0. 2 is strictly bigger than 0. Therefore, this sum is bigger than or equal to 0. Moreover, whenever this function equals 0, then that means V1 squared plus 2 V2 squared equals 0. But v1 squared is bigger than or equal to 0, v2 squared is bigger than or equal to 0, 2 is strictly bigger than or equal to 0. So if their sum equals 0, then we must have that v1 equals v2 equals 0, in which case the vectors v defined by v1, v2 is simply v equals 0, 0, and that is the 0 vector and property for holes. Therefore, we have successfully shown that the function uv as defined is an inner product on the vector space r squared. Beautiful. This is an example for you. Let f and g be elements in c a b. That is, f and v are real valued continuous functions on the compact interval a b. Define the function f g as the integral from a to b f of x times g of x dx. Can you show that f g as defined is an inner product on the set of all real valued continuous functions on the compact interval a b? I'll leave that for you to play with. It's a very beautiful example. Theorem, properties on inner product. Let u, v, and omega be vectors in an inner product space v, and let c be a scalar. The following are true. The function, or since we know that we are dealing with inner product, we can now use the word inner product instead of using functions. So we'd say the inner product of 0 and v is the same as the inner product of v and 0, and that simply equals the scalar 0. Number two, the inner product of u plus v and omega is the same as the inner product of u omega plus the inner product of v omega. And the inner product of u and c times v is the same as c times the inner product of u and v. Proof? simple exercise for serious students let's take a definition and another theorem and we should be done with this lecture let u and b be vectors in an inner product space v then we define the length of u as the norm of u and we've seen that in 5.1 which is simply the square root of the inner product u u Interesting. Recall that in 5.1, we define the norm as the square root of u1 times v1 plus u2 times v2. That was because we used the Euclidean inner product. Here, we're using the generalized inner product. Secondly, the distance between u and v is the norm of u minus v. And while solving this, do not forget that you would be using the definition of the inner product given in that particular case. And three, the angle between two non-zero vectors u and v, as we saw before, is cos theta equals the inner product of u v divided by the norm of u times the norm of v. In 5.1, lecture 24, we simply had u dot v up here, but because we are not dealing with the dot product, we represent this with the general inner product notation. And as we also saw in lecture 24, two vectors u and v are said to be orthogonal if their inner product equals zero. So theorem, let u and b be vectors in an inner product space v, then the new cauchy schwarz inequality is the absolute value of the inner product of u and v 
is less than or equal to the norm of u times the norm of v. Secondly, the triangle inequality, the norm of u plus v is less than or equal to the norm of u plus the norm of v. And thirdly, the Pythagorean theorem, u and v are orthogonal if and only if the square of the norm of u plus v equals the square of the norm of u plus the square of the norm of v. Very close to what we saw in lecture 24, except that here we are dealing with a more generalized definition of the inner product and not just the dot product. Beautiful concepts. Thank you very much.